doing an update of what we've got growing on, both with the sprouts, microgreens, and some things that we are getting ready to put into the ground eventually. So we've got several experiments. This is so gorgeous. These are mung bean shoots grown in just water. You can see those roots. So this is a smaller version of the tray, and this is the larger version, and we've got coriander, cilantro in the front, buckwheat in the back, and you can see the little baby shoots pretty dang cool so um, I just rinse it with water and just really drain it but the whole point of the bottom is that you can also keep water in it but that's just not how I am doing it we've got some fenugreek which has been really slow and we've got some caraway which was even slower practically so these are just some green peas that I had in a different experiment that I've just transitioned over to this tray and because I didn't have any more of these colanders. So this is, I think, several days behind this one. These are basically ready to harvest. And again, just water. There's those roots, pretty incredible. And then over here, we've got the, my tea kettle mung beans, which I learned about from my mom, which she learned about through somebody else that did a video. Um, mung beans really like the dark and they like to be really like crowded together to force them to grow. I like the tails a little longer, so I'll be waiting a bit more on that. And then here we've got our kitchen crop tower gardens, and it's basically a set of two with eight total. Um, we've got these that are ready, they're growing over, but you can see the amounts are so small. It's not my preferred method of growing, but it is. it does work well with things like cilantro. Right, you could see two different stages of the cilantro. So exciting, because they are not easy to grow in just water. Uh, and neither are these, these beautiful garlic gourmet chives, just wonderful. We've got two batches in two different stages. And those are not, that's not mold. Those are root hairs, they're just trying to get water. I think that's a little stuck. Um, I believe that might be some kind of cruciferous, maybe a kale, broccoli, and these are so difficult. They're so gelatinous. They're cress. I did not think that these were going to go anywhere, but as you can see, they are growing, but very sparse because they're so difficult. So basically with this setup, you stack them up, right? Like I've had the whole thing stacked, and then this goes on top, and then the water drains from these little holes. So you can have two different stacks, you can just keep stacking, whatever you wanna do. And then I've transitioned to these half gallon jars just because they produce such a high yield. These are kind of ready. This was a mix. You can see some of the seeds aren't sprouted as well. And I've actually taken some out and let the rest grow. So I've already taken about half of that out and then I've got two more that are in the earlier stages, but I eventually want to have enough to have a jar a day of those and then here we've got a few other experiments this is cilantro that's been going for like a year and a half which started off as just the soil sprouts but it's gone into true leaves so i could use these as starts i could just pick the cilantro off whatever i want to do with that and then these were kale soil sprouts you could see it's going into true leaf as well you could see some little kales I'm trying to get the focus on that like right there and right there and these were just, I think, seeds that didn't sprout in the initial sprouting, so now they are. And then with the green peas, it's very interesting. I don't know if I can show you really well, but they definitely do come back. Um, but where I did the initial cut is not where they grew. They grew two more shoots. Like here's the initial cut, but they grew two shoots next to it, which is so interesting, right? So they definitely grow back, but it takes quite a while. Um, let me show you what else I got going on over here. So it's been raining like cats and dogs and super windy, so Hubs brought this all in. There's the uh, War Eagle River, gorgeous. I had the soil sprouts here, but I'm gonna be building a whole rack. See, it's really gorgeous. This whole view is pretty magnificent. And then over here is the big deck, right? So this I had outside and it's basically all of this soil 
and mulch, and I'm just breaking it down, but the soil is so incredible, the little shoots are just continuing to grow in it. So I might have to just put a little bit more compost, and maybe in a month or so, I could reuse that actual soil. So here we've got strawberries, and I believe there's some blackberries, maybe some Miriam berries, looking pretty good. We've got, these are honey berries, and this is some blueberries, We've got red currant. That does not look like it's doing so hot, although there are some buds in there. And then we've got some honey berries. Those are pretty. And then we've got some magnolia vines, I believe, is what those are. And then we've got some currants. And then we've got pawpaws, which we already have several pawpaws. That's a pawpaw right there. And then there's two more pawpaws right there. So it's pretty warm today. These can probably go back out. And then over here is the rack that I got that I'm going to be building to put all of the different sprouts and microgreens on there. And then I got some more of the half-gallon jars since I'm going to be having um, multiple of those going at once. And all you need is to get the sprouting lids for that. So yeah, that's uh, everything that's going on right now.